This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 649. Tuesdays, we've been talking about professional lives wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. And we got a hell of a crew with us hanging out, talking wrestling. Uh, let's go around the horn. First of all, from Beacon, New York, not Bacon, New York. We're trying not to make that mistake again. Mad Mike is with us. If I was from Bacon, New York, I'd have a lot more grease around my face. Uh, okay all right because there'd be bacon there would be bacon yes and down, down the line here first of all larry is with us hi how's hey doing? You're, you're recovered from the raw or the monday night wrap-up yes 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 i had a gallon of tequila and <laughs> no yeah i'm good that sounds like that sounds like an std christmas party there was no booping of the internet no booping of the internet no 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 also back in studio the Riz has graced us with his presence. This is the first time I've been in this studio for a Mayhem show. Are you serious? For a Mayhem show. But you've been here so many times. I've been here for so many times. I've been here for my Riz Plays games on Twitch, by the way. Uh, I've been with the uh, Brohemoth for his gaming stuff. I've been here for every watch, for some watch parties. Mm-hmm. But I've never been in this couch on a Tuesday night right here, except for today. Wow. I'm back. You're back. <laughs> I-, I traveled through two tunnels two tunnels several bridges yes did, did a narwhal tell you to say hi and have fun on the podcast probably it's been a while and uh i'm pretty sure something like that happened he, it okay. probably the message was sent while he was in the tunnel so he didn't get it yeah bad reception yeah yeah uh well you must be here because joe nebraska has joined us once again who are all of you people and how did i get here um, you? Like, did you take a tunnel? There were tunnels involved. There were okay. tunnels involved. You know what? I will be a full disclosure. I'm here for the couch. This is still the most comfortable couch I have ever experienced. I'm very relaxed, serene. I'm just melting into this thing, and uh, I'll, I'll be asleep by the eight minute mark. I apologize. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, um, that's, uh, we wouldn't be lying if that's not the first time this has happened on this podcast. That is true. This is true. Is it true? You've been here before. You've been here in the studio before doing things. Who, me? Yes. I've done a lot of things here, yes. Most of them involving this couch. <laughs> well, huh. uh, that, that sounds mm. interesting. Yeah. Right. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad to have you back here on the show again. with your Because you, you, you lit a little bit of fire on social media last time you were on. I hope so. I was angry at everybody. You were angry. You seem a little more mellow now. Um, yes, I'm on medication since then. Oh, okay. Um, okay. No, uh, uh, when last uh, you joined me or I joined you, I uh, was ranting quite a bit on how people don't protect themselves and take their social media seriously and how it costs them potential money and opportunity. I don't know if anybody listened to me, but uh, um, either they learned to tune me out or I learned to tune them out. Either way. Mm-hmm. It's all good in the hood. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, I we can't wait to get your opinions on some of the news going on this week in the wrestling world. And you guys can hear all the opinions and be part of the conversation as well. First, you can go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find the links and subscribe to us in podcast and video form. Or look us up on your favorite platform. If we're not there, you can let us know and we can uh, try to get on those uh, platforms. And you can hit us up at that email address. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show and hit us up on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group. A lot of great conversation has happened over there on the Facebook group uh, for Wrestling Mayhem Show. And, of course, on the Facebook page, you'll get the notification when we go live every Tuesday where we try to start around about 9 p.m. Eastern time 
over there. And you can join us in the chat room, just like Dave Part- Podner, uh, Jennifer Carlins. Let's see who else is out there. Alex Miller, Alex Carr is out there all across the country hanging out with us tonight. Bobby FJ Town's in there. FJ Town, I see. Tina Keys is in there. Brandon is in there, too. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us for our Tuesday night hangout. I know that you guys are checking out the, uh, the uh, last bit of SmackDown. Um, but it's okay. We've scared them away, and they're moving to Fridays in the fall. Uh, so <laughs> we will be exclusive wrestling on Tuesday nights. Um, hey, you say that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Actually, you know they're going to add something. There's going to be something, right? I mean, I, we're, well, we'll talk about some of the stuff they're already adding as it is. Um, and also, you can check us out on our streaming partners like the 405media.com, um, where they carry us every midnight uh, Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Pacific Time uh, over there, the latest episode, so you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem. Uh, and also, thank you, everybody, on our Patreon page that's supporting us over there, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, including our friends at the fan of the show $1 level, Bo Diggity! Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby FJ, Tana, and Tina Keys, and the Pocky Club $5 level. Occupy Pro Wrestling, Bradley Brothers, Doc Remedy, and Dave Potter of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. And at the Pizza Club $10 level, our friends at TheWrestlingRevolution.com. Go check them out. You guys can support the show if you're getting low. If, you, if you're feeling the love from this show, you can give the love back at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. You get gold and all kinds of other goodies and notes in there as well. So um, the big we talked about this a little bit last night, but this is the big call up week. It seems mm-hmm. for WWE. Um, you know we, we've we've seen these promos all over the holidays and everything, but we got our NXT call ups, uh, including Nikki Cross. Well, everybody about everybody showed up last night, didn't they? Except for Lars Sullivan. Yeah, except for Lars. Except for Lars didn't get yep. any love. And everyone showed up tonight too, except for Lars so far. And some of them based on cameos. Well, well, Lars is just lurking. Let's let's point that out. Lars is lurking. He's just lurking. Okay. Do you not see his promos? He's lurking. Yeah, the yeah, that's what he does. He's pretty good at it. Um, and that I'm aware of. I, I mean, I've seen some stuff on on Twitter with some um um EC3 and Samoa Joe backstage a little bit. Which I believe I had that. You did? Did you have that? I literally said that last night. You did. Okay. He okay. Did. It's conferred. Um, Otis was making a protein shake tonight with the new oh day. Boy. With the new day. I, and I, Becky I Lynch. Don't, I don't like what they're doing with heavy machinery already. It, it's they haven't like had Otis. a match yet. Well, you wonder. <laughs> they haven't had a match yet. How can we go? Yeah. Like, how can we go? I don't like what they're doing with them if they don't have anything it, it, happen. With have them you yet. watched the two segments? Yes. That, they cannot be taken seriously at all. I'm fine with not taking them seriously. Yeah. No, but but uh, I'm not. We already have enough tag teams we can't take seriously. Dozovich does the worm in a match. He does. Yes. And it's fantastic to see. And technically, he calls it the Caterpillar. Mm-hmm. Of course. Copyright because heavy machinery. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think otherwise about, you know, obviously Nikki Cross got a match last night. And uh, everybody else is just kind of being slightly introduced to everybody, like cameo wise and, and such so far. I don't know. I those were the only two I've seen. To okay. Be honest. <laughs> what about you, Riz? Uh, <clears throat> I I marked out a little bit for EC3 just being there Monday. Mm-hmm. Just a showing up on Monday was nice to see. Uh, the way they're doing this, I kind of have a, I kind of like, and I I, I kind of like, it, but I'm not sure if I'm going to like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Just having them on both shows until they're ready or until they split up into the draft or if there's going to be another draft or like, I don't know when this end is, if they're going to split off into like after WrestleMania or something. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm, I'm going to be watching and enjoying what's happening with between the two sides. But like with Nikki, Nikki cross, I am pretty sure she's probably going to go SmackDown. Mm hmm. Unless sanity comes over, she's been on both programs too. She has, but uh, I'm I'm just wait I'm, I'm just waiting to see where they go. Mm-hmm. Um, Joe, I, I don't know if you've been hearing any, the, seen any news with this and uh, with the uh, NXT call ups or anything. Of course, the DC collection. No, uh, EC three is probably somebody you've seen 
Actually, I know your former promotion he was involved with as well, right? Indeed, indeed. Available on the Indie Wrestling Network. Yes, absolutely. Under um, other names, though. Yes. Uh, his, uh, his his given name, his birth name, Michael Hutter. Mm-hmm. But uh, EC3 now. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was very surprised to see how, for lack of a better term, cold the introduction was for a lot of these talents. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, usually you want to have that that big inciting incident to really um, draw the audience in after you've done, you know, the vignettes for however many weeks. We didn't really get that. So um, I think the jury's out on, you know, how well each of these is going to pay off. We've seen examples of guys come from NXT very seamlessly and smoothly. We've seen guys not be able to connect with that general audience. I think, EC3 is the saves of the bunch because he's just dripping star power out of every pore of his body. He, there, it's if not for if if not for his injuries and and you know things of that nature, I don't think he would have ever left there to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever they put him in, I think he's one of those talents that'll find a way to make it work. Um, everybody else, it's maybe a little bit more. Um, ingrained into their system and not as accustomed to thinking on their feet or, or, or adapting on the fly, maybe a little bit more shackled compared to what their creative is. But um, yeah, I, I, I think the jury's out overall. EC3 will be fine. But as far as everybody else, I, I, I only really saw the EC3, EC3 thing on Monday. I haven't seen... Um, the Otis stuff or anything like that. But from, from what I hear, it's an odd first impression. And my biggest issue with some of the NXT call-ups is the assumption that they make that all of their audience is already in with the story. Mm-hmm. And the best example I can use with that uh, is when they called up uh, Enzo and Big Cass. And I felt like as someone that does not watch NXT, not for an ideological reason, I just don't have the network, I don't have time, get off my back. But to see them come out after WrestleMania, which was the perfect time to do it, to see them confront the Dudley boys, which were great foils, but me sitting there personally as a fan, felt like I walked into the movie halfway in, and I don't know who these people are, what they're doing, and I felt myself more relating to Bubba Ray Dudley, who was standing in the ring with the who the F are you guys look on his face. Um, I didn't get it. The audience obviously got it, uh, who were there, because they were the post-WrestleMania crowd, but mm-hmm. for me, who, in that context, was the Joe Average mainstream fan that didn't really understand the backstory, um what drew me and what sucked me in if if we get um otis doing whatever he was doing in catering or whatever he's whatever he's doing with uh with, with these segments is that the best way to program a first impression for somebody probably not but you know i i can't judge until until we see the big picture but that would be my concern is if they if they jump in midstream without having a way to reestablish who these people are for potentially millions of fans that are not following NXT, at least regularly. Something a little more than the vignettes we've been getting this last several weeks. The same vignette. It's been the same. Yeah, nothing new. It, it was like four, three or four weeks of the same vignettes for each of these guys, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and vignettes only go so far. Mm. Um, you know who had really cool vignettes? Glacier. <laughs> and that only had a certain bit of a ceiling to it right and and it's i don't know if it really benefits any of them to have them all showing up for the first time on the same show right right because it's a lot of new information to take in all at once and i, I think it's also kind of hurtful that Lacey and ec3 have wrestled on main event was like, it main event or was it a dark match? I I, I was on I, I was on the understanding it was a dark match. I'm fairly confident it was main event. Okay. Fairly confident it was main. Event. Then again, they may have just had the main event graphics up, mm-hmm. but like it was definitely right before RAW. That's usually what main event is. So, 
because I, I think somebody tweeted that out and then like was was corrected that it might not might have just been dark match but who knows um if that is and that would have been up by now if that's for real right i believe so yeah does, does main event still um go first run on the network or is that still something else uh i believe it does let me actually i forgot yeah, main event was a thing. Let, me, let me double check i know i know superstars is gone um and i'm using a regular network search here but um yeah i'm seeing like yeah I, the most recent i'm seeing is from the uh, 9th of december so that's not even first run here so oh well. um i don't know we'll see what happens with that one thing that was introduced amid weird otis posturing uh was the um women's tag team champions chips which is, is it's gonna be given up in an interesting way um so three teams from each show are going to be in an elimination chamber. Or I, I just checked it out. They had um, clip shows. It was a clip event. show. Yeah, so so they weren't wrestling for main event. They were dark match. So it was dark match. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, they had clip shows for the for the last two weeks of the year. So we're going to get here between, um, I guess, between Royal Rumble and Fastlane. We're going to get an get elimination chamber for the women's titles, the women's tag titles, and six teams from two shows. Yep. Interesting that there we're getting just one. Like this is the first kind of crossover title we've had in a while, right? Yeah, I, I guess, think it's since this brand Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was that, Mike? I think it's great. I think it's perfect. I think it's what they should have done with the men's tag titles. So is this going to lead to? Are they going to start collapsing the titles together again? No, I don't think no, so. No, just this one. They're just going to have one title hanging out there. That's that's a cross brand. They don't have a. They don't have thirty women between the two rosters. Mm-hmm. They don't like if you if you add them up, and even if you include the two singles champions, they don't have thirty women between those rosters. Mm-hmm. So that's not enough to really have a full division. I feel or like two it, two full divisions. I feel like I get filled out. We were having this conversation, uh, I'd like to get you guys' inputs because I know Mike and I were having the same conversation last night. I feel like they can pull a lot of women in from NXT, NXT UK, and and I mean I think there's a lot of waiting in the wings to go into those to fill in to to have more of a main roster. Of women as well but um i don't know what do you guys think uh, joe what do you think about the the depth of the women's wrestling well, I mean, in wwe you could you can do exactly what you just said but there's only so many spots for so many bodies right right and, and here's another title on yeah, top of a, yeah. another title and another 10 to 12 people that you want to cram on the show and there, there's already such overload with content and mm-hmm. overload with talent um you know Make who's on the program matter as it is now. And and I, I would support, you know, collapsing these championships and doing more of a, a traveling champion type deal, especially when you have so many different outlets and so many different brands and, you know, areas for a champion to travel to now. It makes it more special. It's not just Raw and SmackDown. You can see a guy pop up on NXT or 205 or in the UK. That's an intriguing concept. And I think... Uh, as time goes on, and especially with this this billion dollar Fox television deal, you're going to see a lot more crossover anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so you might as well get the most out of that while you can, or at least justify it in the context of a story, so you can have guys floating around, which you know you're already seeing with John Cena, and you're probably going to start seeing with other guys as well. Um, I'm curious: Do we have six established female tag teams currently? Uh, I think we have five. I'd five? say we have What's five. Your... SmackDown's one light. Okay. Um, on Raw, you can have um, the uh, Bailey and Sasha. You can have Tamina and Nia. You can have mm-hmm. the Riot Squad. Mm-hmm. You can have, um, I mean, hell, you could have Natty and Ronda. They've been fairly established. Mm-hmm. Um, you could have you could. M- Mickey and Alicia. They've tagged together a lot. Mm-hmm. On SmackDown, you have the Iconics. And you have Mandy and Sonya. Uh, Naomi and Asuka were a tag team, but since Asuka's women's champion right now, that doesn't really seem to fly. But, I mean, you could do Carmella and Naomi. You could do Lana and Naomi. They had a bit of a, a thing together during the Mixed Match Challenge where they were dancing and everything. So. Yeah, they'll probably be Yeah, I mean, basically one... we need one more tag team on SmackDown. But that, if you do that... If you do that, you're going to lose all those people in the singles 
division. Yeah, but you know? I think that they'll, they'll come and go, right? I don't know if they're having a. I don't know if they're having a championship elimination chamber match for the women. Mm-hmm. But but but, 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 but given, given this tag team match, I don't think they're going to. Mm. But I, I I think like all those like most of those are kind of cobbled together teams. So I think you'll still have women in tag teams like kind of go off and you know fight like, well, no, that belt. And they're not come really back. cobbled together. The only one I mentioned that's cobbled together is uh, Natty and Ronda. Mm-hmm. The rest of them have been pretty well established for at least the better part of the year. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Absolutely. Well, you're still going to have issues, and you're still going to have, um, depending on where your story goes, people who can flip flop from one side to another. I, I, it, it's it's so odd in 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 this day and age where once upon a time an elimination chamber or or something of that effect would be a blow off after a long bit of build. And yeah. Rob Naylor said this on Twitter. Now it's the way to introduce the championships. And <laughs> it's so bizarre to me. I, I guess it's a sign of the times. Uh, what, what strikes me as odd is that you're, you're doing a match stipulation that inherently does literally nothing to establish the concept of tag team wrestling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, because you're all there at the same time. Yeah, the, there will be no tags. There will be no actual psychology related to tag team wrestling in this match whatsoever. And if any of those teams are kind of thrown together or haphazardly put in there, if they have to to allocate for singles matches or whatever, that's going to get very convoluted to follow. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and again, to make a point, too, about uh, as far as depth, keep in mind the last time there were women's tag team champions in WWE, there were only literally two tag teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but women's wrestling up until lately was never better in WWE than at that point when you had the Glamour Girls and the Jumping Bomb Angels. Wow! And 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 those matches, you know how I discovered those two tag teams? Probably from me. Well, no, 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 I know. Uh, back in the no, day, no, they're on, they're uh, on one of the Rumbles, right? Uh, no, 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 no. A young sword once rented and actually now owns. Uh, WWF's most unusual matches. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Women's tag team wrestling was unusual. What and included an oddity? In- <laughs> yes. Also, well, also it included like battle royals, but you know, uh, it was like 1986. So you don't see that on like you Ish. know the Saturday morning show, right? Yeah, so. was negative one. But. To the point. To the R- point. Riz they, was negative one. He didn't even know they yeah. were on the undercard of a Raw Rumble as well. Yeah. 19, oh, absolutely. Nineteen eighty-eight, <laughs> before it even went to pay per view. That's right. On the USA Network. That's right. Uh, live special. That's where you got the the special stuff. Because like we that. hate Bunkhouse Stampede. Hacks- Hacksaw got the big rub. <laughs> that's right. Hacksaw. Take that, WCW. Can, can we put the Glamour Girls or the Jumping Bomb Angels in the Elimination Chamber? How I would I love to see Ooh. the Jumping Bomb. I'd Angels like to see the how they're doing. Chamber. Oh, you're you're off. As far as I know, they're still uh, Leilani Kai. Le- Leilani Kai is on Facebook. Judy Martin and the jumping. Mm-hmm. I have not heard anything of the jumping by <laughs> angels. If anybody knows the whereabouts of Norio Tatino and Izuki Yamazaki, wow. uh, please tweet the show because That's, I would love to know. That's a good poll. But they, uh, Leilani and Judy were 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 so great at, at bumping and feeding and 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 working with a style. That in 1988, WWE was so, um, so new and so progressive, and especially comparing Japanese women's wrestling to 1980s American women's wrestling, which was full of hair pulling and fabulous moolah, you know, heel tactics, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Any other team, there would have been a, a major styles clash, but Leilani and Judy made that work, and they went around the horn so to speak for whatever they did eight ten twelve months and um to this day i i would lump that in with uh Alundra blaze and bull nakano i'd lump that in with gail kim and awesome kong as my favorite women's matches and um not to say that that everything needs to be like that but if they're can be a bit more of a stylistic change in in the way they present the women's tag team division. If there can be a team or two that comes in from Japan that can be built up, um, that'll help add that different flair and that different vibe that that made the Bomb Angels and the Glamour Girls stand out. So potentially something um, 
especially as we, we go more global and, and look into more talents from, you know, Japan and scout more talents from this May Young Classic and everything. Um, just that, that diversity stylistically, if it can fit in the vibe of WWE, which isn't always the best thing to do or the easiest thing to accomplish. Um, and I, I, I was, as we were talking about the women's tag, I saw of two other tag teams that could potentially show up in this match too. You got Trish and Lita, but they could save that for WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. And sadly, you could also have the Bella Twins show up. Oh, and it's in Phoenix. It is in Phoenix. It's, yep. it's oh. right in their hometown. They can literally drive there. Well, for the Rumble. Oh, the Rumble. You're right. Yeah, That's yeah. The, the, the okay. Chamber's not going to be in the That's Rumble. Right. Yeah. yeah, but they can they can establish and say they're going to be in the Chamber match at this the Rumble. This is true. This is true. Oh, I'm surprised no one said the Pretty Mean Sisters. They could do it. PMS. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, well, actually, we we have a we have a caveat. We're not allowed to talk anything related to meat on this show. Mm. I didn't bring up Sean hey. Stasiak. You did. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to talk a little bit about again. Riz got to check out because there's so much wrestling. Uh, NXT uh, UK so Takeover. So I want to hear about uh, that and 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 learn more about this Walter that I can, apparently I can only um, use all caps for Walter. You have to yell Walter, it. Walter. Oh, Walter. Looking. There we go. Like that? Is that That's how we say better. it on the show now? Okay. No, no, I'm not going to say No? It on the show. Okay. Hey, guys, what if there was a network for indie wrestling like there is for the WWE? What if we told you you can find some great indie wrestling content on the Indie Wrestling US network? Whether you're looking for wrestling shows or behind the scenes content like Duke and Doe's Hardcore Memories or Breakfast with Champions, which we just put out a part two of that today, actually, or documentaries like The Legend of Virgil featuring Joe Dabrowski that's joining us here on the show right now. Your, your day with Virgil. Well, one of your days with Virgil, I guess. Yeah, right? I spent a week with him one day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Longest week of your life, huh? Yep, yep. <laughs> There's new content added weekly for a limited, for a limited time. You can get that for a seven-day free trial. You can go check it out at www.indywrestling.network. Like I said, they, we have, there's plenty of stuff going on up there, uh, including Breakfast with Champions just posted today where... Uh, <laughs> Local local people will get this. David Lawless said that he'd take a bump for uh, Edgar Snyder, for instance. So, uh, but no, including uh, exclusively 2PW Uprise, some new upstart promotions here in Pittsburgh, Waterweight Wrestling, PWO, some classic stuff. There's some old old Johnny Gargano matches and uh, and uh, geez, who else shows, shows up? Like a bunch of people. Are Not there. that old. Don't date me. Not that. No, 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 no. Like back in the day, Johnny- maybe. Johnny Gargano mm-hmm. as a strapping young late teens rookie. Mm-hmm. Colin Delaney, Madison Rain, EC3, young rookie Gregory Iron, and many more. And many more. Even some fa- some some uh, uh, familiar to the show, Jimmy DeMarco, also featured on there. Delicious. While he was still allowed in Cleveland. <laughs> but we won't no. get into that story. Yeah, we don't have enough time. No, we don't have enough time for that. I'm sure we've told this story on the show before. If Chris LaRusso were here, he would make us get into it because he <laughs> feels the need to remind me of that issue every single time I see him. You know, in a world where just weird stuff happens in wrestling that we hear about all the time. Uh, <laughs> could you could you believe that when me and Jimmy DeMarco got together, it got even weirder? Yeah, yes. you know. I mean, could you imagine if Twitter was as big on on slamming pro wrestling when Jimmy DeMarco was at his at his height of controversy? I still remember one of the earliest moments of Jimmy DeMarco on this show Mm -hmm. was he took down when we were on what blog TV Mm -hmm. at one point. He took it down. Oh, was that when he showed his ass or something? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That happened. That's when we started learning the perils of live (laughs) streaming. But but you can check out all that fun history, IndieWrestling.network. Uh, that uh, first run, um, day and date releases for IWC, RWA, Rise Wrestling, and so much more. There's actually, there are three shows happening this weekend, Uprise, RWA, and IWC, and all three will be included, uh, let's say, within a week of their um, going up, uh, happening this, this next weekend, if... I don't have any problems editing. Uh, so go check it out. It's a great value. Uh, $5.99 a month, seven-day free trial. Go sign up, network. And thank you, everybody, that's been... Um, yes, I know Duke and Doe, uh, they kind of changed 
you'll have to wait till the next episodes. We just recorded two new episodes of uh, Duke and Dose uh, Hardcore Memories, um, where I learned about um, going to Denny's with ECW wrestlers. Um, there's some good Balls Mahoney stories. There's some good Kamala Eaton Park stories. I know this sounds so exciting, doesn't it? You're giving me a face, Joe. I'm just imagining Kamala at Eaton Park. <laughs> <laughs> what does he order? Well, everything. Whatever no, he, he wants. He can't speak. Right. So he can, he kimchi can would have to order for him. Exactly. And Kamala would prefer his meat still be alive. Right. Right. So the cook. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well played. <laughs> Fun show's coming out. Go check it out. Indie Wrestling. Man, this sponsor read went way off kilter for you, <laughs> didn't it? No, oh, this is this, this is, is fine. Normal. This is fine. This is every day. You lost the audience at DeMarco's ass. Yeah. Did I? Yeah. But I brought it back that, for Kamala at Eaton Park. in the audience. There you go. <laughs> All right. So NXT UK TakeOver. Am I saying those in the right order? NXT yes. UK TakeOver Blackpool. 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 <laughs> I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn cities in the UK now. Yeah. Well, You're going to learn cities. In your defense, the announcers aren't even calling it TakeOver Blackpool anymore. Really? No. They're, They're just really calling just it takeover. UK TakeOver. Maybe when there's more of them? It's too long. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of words. That, uh, nope. Nope, nope. Not going to make that joke. Um, anyways, so I want to qualify. I started watching NXT UK a couple weeks ago. I'm up to mid-November. Okay. The beginning of the women's tournament for the for the title. Good point. Good point. So I'm enjoying it. I love that it looks like like it looks like every match is in a castle. Yeah. Also, the match the ring looks huge because they're <laughs> way they're way too close for hard cam for it, it. Yeah, so it just looks like a giant sea of wrestling ring that all this action is happening in. Um, tell me, that's actually the conversion rate. That's so. a conversion rate. Is that? Yeah. Well, conversion. when you convert the wrestling ring to 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 meters, well, no, it's the wrestling ring is a certain number of pounds in oh. the U.S., but that converts to stone. So, I don't. That, okay. Anyways, uh, so Riz, tell yes. us how was Takeover UK Blackpool NXT NXT to Boogaloo to Boogaloo. Um, um, it was bananas. It was, bananas. It was crazy. It was, it was crazy. Was it bananas with an accent? It was crazy. Okay. Like, I, like, I, I don't know the customs too well. Uh, and I, I, as Thank I was you, telling, I have no idea what's going on with the audience half the time. As I was telling Sorg uh, during the first match, uh, which was the tag team title match, uh, I believe his name was Zach Gibson, came into the ring, and all of a sudden I see everybody take off their shoe and show it to him, <laughs> and start like singing about if you don't like Zach Gibson, take off your shoe. I just realized something here. We actually have somebody who actually has done work in the UK that maybe you can translate some of this. What is the significance of the shoe? What is with the shoe? What is the shoe? I have never removed my shoe in such a rebellious way like that. So (laughs) it's a formal protest. Yeah. (laughs) I'm assuming all that comes from uh, uh, what they refer to as as the football. Okay. Um, their soccer style chains. I don't know. Um, when I went to England, the wrestling fans uh, did wrestling chants. Mm-hmm. And uh, somewhere between when they kicked me out of the country and now, uh, that went away. It got crazier. It got, it got a little weird. Mm-hmm. But uh, okay. I, I love the vibe. I, I can say that... Um, I, I would rank the British wrestling fans as passionate or more passionate than any American city I've been in. I, I'd, I'd put England, New York, Chicago, maybe one or two others, but th- those stand out the most as far as this deafening reactions. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if it's because they've been so starved from it for so long or just culturally or, or whatever the deal is, but um, so passionate and, and to spend the money they do to come to WrestleMania and stuff like that. And just um, insanely huge market to tap into there. Mm-hmm. And and I'm not at all surprised to see that uh, WWE is doing that. And that, that, that it's been hot over there for so long. 
I'm 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 happy for. I'd like to uh, uh, plug uh, my boy El Ligero, who uh, I worked with in in One PW. Um, hardest working guy over there because he, I think he somehow some years has wrestled more matches than there are days in the year. Um, I've heard about that. Yeah, he he, he insane schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, double and triple shots. Uh, my boy Sid Scala who was uh, part of the Welterweight 1 intermission package uh, oh, bonus yeah. match, is uh, part of NXT UK doing something. You watch the thing, you can tell me. Um, I know he's been, in the early episodes, he's been uh, a couple of times on there. Yeah, matches, wearing so, a yeah. suit and doing some backstage stuff with whatever, Johnny Saints, right? Yeah. And the, the, and the, I'm smart. <laughs> and the interviewer with the big hair. Yeah, who is Ooh, that? I don't I know. No I idea. think he's just British um, uh, Sam he's Roberts. Just British. British <laughs> Sam Roberts. I was going to make that correlation. I am surprised that um, someone with that much hair positioned in that way mm-hmm. received a job. <laughs> with WWE? <laughs> yes. Well, Sam Roberts is like kind of around all the time, too, so I think they're getting used to it. Is he? Yeah. I seen him no, lately. no, he's been... Not, not so much anymore. He's still like... Sam, doing... Sam's an exception no, because he's... No, not, not really he? that much. Sam's mainstream. Right. Sam's... Right. He's a radio Sam's guy. Serious. He's a serious you know radio Sam. or whatever. Yes. He's not a serious radio. He's, he's not a podcaster anymore. But Big Hair McGillicuddy in England, <laughs> who is he? <laughs> well, they know. Who do you ever beat? <laughs> <laughs> Um, where's his know. gold medals? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just asking questions. Oh, uh, Riz, what else? Uh, what else happened to you? What are the highlights here? Uh, and, or any new chance that that confound you? Oh, the, or was, as Joe said, the, the crowd was hot the entire night. Yeah, like, it was. Yeah. It was like Dude, the tapings are insane. It, yeah, I mean the live shots of everything happening mm-hmm. was just crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony Storm. I don't want to spoil anything. No, for go you. and spoil. It's all right. No, it's okay. The, the because, internet's going to tell me eventually. Because it's because, your own fault. Yeah, no, it's, no. it's your fault that you missed. Dude, it's so. like it's like I watch every cruiserweight title match, but I, I'm still back in November on 205 Live. So, so what the internet needs fine. to understand is that if it's already happened, they aren't spoilers. They're now results. They're just we can news. proceed. This is true. Yes. Uh, so don't spoil me on that football game. What? Uh, so uh, Rhea Ripley won the title. In the tournament that you have, yes, that you were watching, yes. Uh, spoiler Tony, alert! Spoiler alert! Tony Storm in an amazing match came up and was the, 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 both people, both the women were amazing in that mm-hmm. match, and Tony Storm wound up winning finally the NXT Women's NXT UK Women's Title Blackpool whatever. Uh, but uh, to go to the point where the the for the territories and doing all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Finn Balor came to NXT to face uh, Devlin. Mm-hmm. And that was an amazing match. Unannounced, too. right? Unannounced. 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 It was a surprise. Um, so that Well, happened. he was there because they did announce that they did open up the UK Performance Center. Right, mm-hmm. right. Of course they Which did. I think is the third. <laughs> well, I think they closed. They might have closed the one in Saudi did Arabia. Did they close the one in Saudi Arabia? Really? I believe I that was only open for a short time. Uh, oh, it was a seasonal uh, opportunity. I, I think it was. I think it wasn't a. I don't believe it was a full performance center. I think it was just a couple day long tryout. Oh, it was like a camp. I thought yeah. they. they yeah. it sounded like it was like a full performance center. No, uh, no, okay. no, no. I think they went to a like a, a center that was already established. Put up the banners, mm-hmm. and there you go. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, because they were filming everything. So. Right, right. But this is like this is going to be this is an established WWE UK performance yes, center yes, that will yes. be proceeding. So that's awesome. Yeah, it, it's it's like um, it's like the comic Batman Incorporated. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. That's a little. I, I don't think it's we, a deep cut reference. It's, it's a deep cut. If you if you've read it, if you get that, we'll roll with it. Anyways, I don't, I, I don't get it. Riz, yes. Uh, the main event in the main event there's one spot that you need to just watch okay uh both uh joe coffee and and uh pete dunn pete dunn thank you the guy I interviewed and i can't remember his name uh who was the other guy from who's the other guy in wb uk that you interviewed mark andrews thank you he does remember that i do remember that 
Uh, and I remember everything else. He remembers that. that. He remember, but he doesn't remember the the, the guy that's the been guy the that has a forever. champion in his for, yes. championship in his days. mouth. In his uh, mouth, yes. That's not that's not Beast Man. No, it's not Beast Man. I hope I will never be Beast Man soon. Um, <laughs> oh man, I just booked it for two weeks for now. Yes, <laughs> please come back. Uh, so there's this one spot in this match where uh, they're both on the top rope. Mm-hmm. Oh, I saw this. <laughs> uh, Pete Dunn just takes a fall off that top rope, and Joe's just falls backwards, and and uh, Dunn goes to the outside. Like I don't think that was supposed to happen. I, that or Pete was supposed to carry him over or something. So they do the spot again. They exactly the same, but this time Pete holds on for dear life and just takes coffee with him like just just that spot alone is just i thought they were both dead twice uh but that ma- like, and, then you, the- and then you took your shoes off and held them up both of them. oh there he goes there oh, come on there, there, goes. there it is oh yeah right for the camera up for the camera for the camera there you go sorry joe I'm, I'm gonna put this back on now but i was do we have any for breeze or anything it, it, yeah, we'll get some out okay, of the bathroom. Um, I told you I'd wind up unconscious. This is just another reason. This is true. If anything, <laughs> it'll wake you up. Yeah. Pungent. Yeah. Uh, but, and and then after, they, they do the fake tease. Mm-hmm. They do the fake tease. Like, I, I got I got faked out. Because I, I, I watched the, I watched the, I watched the show. Mm-hmm. I see the little corner thing saying, oh, thanks for watching. Like, this is the WWE, WWE Network. See you guys. And then all of a sudden Walter comes out and like everybody like from the beginning to, like I said, from beginning to end, they were crazy. When Walter's music hit, it went up to even louder. And everybody lost their damn mind. Yeah. And it just ended perfectly. Like everything they did was well written, well, well executed, well, everything. It they was took, well. They took you for a ride. Uh, it was well done. Oh, oh, and you get to watch it at like three in the afternoon, so you don't have to stay up late. Uh, I actually watched it late. Okay, I, I watched it uh, when it was supposed to be uh, like when pay per views were in are in America. So I, I just watched it normal normal time for us. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch it at two o'clock in the afternoon because. Time zones are tricky. Yeah. yeah, they are tricky, as Larry found out with Wrestle Kingdom a couple weeks ago. Fucking Japan! Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's wow! Okay. How much that you, ha- you have a you have a like thing for the entire country of Japan? No, it's more the time zones mm. than anything. Mm. Well, anyways, uh, and they also had, they also had a um, a fun announcement of people in the crowd, as most takeovers do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Kaylee Ray and Jazzy Gabbert mm-hmm. are both going to be part of NXT UK. Nice. Which is awesome because Jazzy was one of my favorites from the first May Young, but then she got injured. Excellent. So, hey, yeah. so there was there was some news out of this um, when they were doing all their media with the uh, performance center and everything. Uh, Triple H and, and I'm sorry, I, I went to try to find the um, article for this, but he was quoted in talking about kind of how in we're kind of expecting a uh, UK, I'm sorry, a, a WWE Germany to start rolling out here soon as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and how he kind of perceives this uh, uh, future of WWE, and maybe this is lends to what we're talking about the women's tag championships and uh, Finn coming over and everything. Um, kind of reimagining the territory system as to basically WWE territories, where people are going to go from. And we already see this between Raw and SmackDown, obviously, but also like people will come back to NXT. I feel like Cesaro did this back in the day a little bit. Um, you know, we could have, you know, those belts go over. We see the UK championship come over to NXT a good bit until they've had their show, of course, uh, here. Um, you know, what do you guys think about that? Like this idea of them, you know, again, kind of, you know, controlling, you know, creating their own competition as they've tried to do with Raw and SmackDown in the past, but kind of on a broader scale, it seems. Anybody? Nobody. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to word it as creating your own competition. I don't think that's you know. That's, no, that's, but that's I a think, misnomer. Right. But 
it's it's just it's getting as much of the market share as you possibly can mm-hmm. and you know at least for the well maybe with the exception of now and with the all elite wrestling but it was a uh it was a buyer's market as far as signing talent everybody mm-hmm. was out there there were no real competing offers there were not a lot of guys locked up in, in comparative competitive long term deals so they had the opportunity to do this. And again, huge market in England, big market in Germany. Not too long ago, Italy was a huge market. India was a huge market. Mm-hmm. Uh, still is really to, to a lot of extent. Um, there's untapped potential there. There's dollars there sitting on the table. Um, as, as the company grows and expands year to year, this becomes more and more feasible. And I think this has probably been something in the wheelhouse for a long time. And the only thing I could see becoming an issue to hinder this is if there continues to be a dip in U.S.-based business, everybody's going to rally behind the, the flagship show, which is always going to be Monday Night Raw. Mm-hmm. But as long as they have the flexibility to farm out this talent, I think it's an, an inevitability that you're going to see um, these WWE brands popping up all over the place. And, and again, whatever type of fan, whether it be stylistically or nationally or culturally, um, they're going to try to find a way to tap into that and, and to monetize it. You think it's going to get oversaturated in like the WWE circle? To me, it already is. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but I mean, like to like the general audience like you think like people are going to be spending so much time watching raw and smackdown and uk that they're going to forget all about 205 live they're going to forget about uh i don't know frankfurt or the women's classic you know what i mean yeah you can see that's already happening Mm -hmm. too without a doubt Mm -hmm. i uh when i was when i was 13 years old um when i was a a, a youngin back in the day um you you watch your raw on monday and then you got all week, and there's nothing else to watch um, until until your weekend programming, and you're you're left, you know, salivating for more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're craving more. You you find every little clip you can get on the internet. You read every little thing you can, and now there's just there's there's so much of it at the drop of a hat, at the push of a finger. Um, it's turning into work. It is. It, I mean. Yeah. It's and I've had this conversation with other people. It's it's not that anticipation. Oh, only three more days till Monday night. I can't wait. What's going to happen? It's oh god. There's another six hours of programming now. I got to watch, and it makes everything feel very a lot less special. And I'm not going to say they're wrong for doing it because if they're getting the rights fees and the licensing fees and they're making money off of it, mm-hmm. great. Um, but man, I mean, there's got to be a way to. There's got to be a way to streamline or compartmentalize this to some degree, because I think a lot of these drops in numbers are coming from the fact that nothing feels as special anymore because you're just hit over the head with so much content day after day after day on a pay-per-view week. Mm-hmm. Forget about it. Well, uh, also, is this really meant for, I mean, we're, we're kind of the super fans, right? And we watch obscene amount of wrestling let's just say it uh because that's where we're at right but but to the normal everyday person do you see like they're watching raw they they subscribe to the network to see the pay-per-views and maybe they pick up on an nxt right and then if you're into uk well you watch the uk program because that's your home program for the most so part, that's the yeah. attraction I, I don't think i don't think normal people are expected to be taking in all of the content but it's more as long as you're watching something on the network, we have you. I, I, I don't think anyone's expected to be taking in everything that WWE produces on a weekly basis. No, absolutely. Like, no, that's no, what I'm like, saying. Yeah, no, I don't think anyone's really expected to. Like, because, like that's that's one of the reasons like, they don't have like a lot of cross promotional stuff. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people want like NXT guys, like an NXT versus main roster thing. And I'm like, you can't really have that because. If you go to a, like a Raw or a SmackDown and you mention, say, the name Johnny Gargano, mm-hmm. guy, a guy who we all know because we watch NXT, if you mention that to Joe Schmo, whoever who has a WWE title at a Raw, they may not know who that is. They may have 
maybe heard it, but have they ever seen a Jerry Gargano match? Probably not. So, I mean, I think it's all just like, because there are a lot of people who don't like the current main roster stuff, the Raw and SmackDown. So it's all different flavors. It's like, it's like if you're a Marvel fan, but like you think the movies are getting a bit too much. So you go to the Netflix shows, or if you think the Netflix shows are a little too hardcore, you might go like, watch runaways on hulu or cloak and dagger on freeform like there's different it's right. for different like sections of the audience or if i i take that another like look at marvel comics you're not expected to read every marvel comic that goes out there no. but we'll have something for you mm-hmm. right as long as you're yeah. buying something then they're and getting like, your dollars and like occasionally there will be a crossover event like that introduces you to other characters and other stories and other programming that could bring you in for a little bit and maybe you'll fade in and out or something, right? Right. Like, so. like on um, Royal Rumble weekend, they're actually having a tri branded mm-hmm. battle royal. Right. And the battle royal is um they have five guys from two oh five live, five guys from NXT and five guys from NXT UK. Mm-hmm. They're gonna have a fifteen man battle royal. And then a um this is all gonna be like compressed in a um a network special, I believe. Okay. And after that, they're going to have a tournament. Whoever wins the Battle Royal gets a bye to the finals. Whoever goes through the bracket of the tournament, those two square off in the finals. And whoever wins gets a title shot for whatever brand they want Hmm. out of those three. So you could have someone like Mark Andrews go for the NXT UK title. Or you can and, a lot have, of, and a lot of those guys mixing it up from those different like kind of secondary programs. That's cool. I yeah. mean, that's the kind of stuff you can do to do to do that or a you know Impact versus Lucha Underground kind of thing like you guys attended last last week. Exactly. Right? So it'll be interesting to see where it goes here. Um, and again, with uh, you know, hey, there's another promotion in the works that's going to be with the AEW. Um, and I don't think there was any new news this past week. Just some solidifying things they said at the press conference, right? And um, yeah, uh, they they also um, Brandy Rhodes clarified her comments about the equal pay thing. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, everyone's not going to be paid the same amount, mm-hmm. but there's not going to be a gap in wages for whatever your skill level is. Okay, so that's that's basically the gist of it. Like Chris Jericho is not going to get paid the same amount as a Britt Baker, um, as Britt Baker, which yeah. I think is the only female that's officially signed. I think right Penelope now. Ford is too. Who is Penelope? Penelope Ford. Oh, that's right. Penelope Ford was. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So that'll be good to see. But yeah, so they're not going to be making the same money. But like Penelope Ford and Joey Janela probably are going to make. I'm telling the same you money. guys, I'm doing my multi-screen setup, and AAW is going to be slotted in there with ROH and Impact and all the secondary WWE programming. Actually, probably the primary too. I'm just going to take two hours and watch all the programming for the week, and that's it. Not be good. Sorg, you will um, not. You will you not be good. You're just That's... describing Back to the Future, right? You're gonna have a seizure. Yeah. This is a second Back to the Future reference tonight for that exact scene. It's gonna be it's like amazing. It's gonna be like opening the uh, um, arc in Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> it, you're just we'll, gonna melt. <laughs> we'll need you to have like a life alert just in case you like start having a fit. Sorg, a fit. Just a fit. I don't care what happens. If if you feel any different, press that button. And relax. Because somebody's going to help you. If you smell smoke, get out of the building because I don't want you to so burn my I, think, I just think you're going to come up with a lot of cool crossover ideas. What? Wait, what? What? No, I think I think Sorg's going to come out of that two-hour block like, oh, man, you guys, I can't wait to see Ali versus Drew Gulak. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or even better, I'm going to believe that match actually happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. exactly. There We've seen go. Drew Gulak in, the, in action like that. Because eventually some of these people will blur together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Anyways, you know what? Uh, you know what doesn't blur By together? By the way, Storm, someone named T. Cross. T. I don't Cross. Know who, I don't know who that is in the chat room. He says hi. He says two of my best friends, Sorg and Joe. Yeah, I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> Joe doesn't either, apparently. <laughs> Vaguely familiar with them. Vaguely familiar with this uh, T cross. V- very forgettable. Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I mean, he apparently uh, forgot some letters in his own name, so that shows you exactly what he brings to the table. Wow! <laughs> wow! Jeez. Well, um, 
Nice guy, though, you know. <laughs> well, as long as he's a nice guy. <laughs> says, Don't you bury me, Joe. <laughs> Do it. Do it. I can't hear what he's telling me. Been working for seven years. Dirt. Why change now? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys. Okay. We're going to bring it around to something everybody can agree on. Pizza. Right? Yay. Yay. Our We're friends at Slice on Bright supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting. Did for you the... want us to answer like right away? I or don't what? know. I, something. Anything to cut the tension. The and neighbors are trying to kick the doors down. Trying trying to to they're kicking it. the doors down next door right now because they think we have some pizza left over here. But no, you guys ate it all. Did you guys eat it all? Is there any left over there? There may be a slice I think or two. There might be a slice or two. Uh, but uh, go check them out. They're here in Beachview. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, Beachview, Carnegie, the East End, and PNC Park home, the Pittsburgh Pirates, if you're in for a ball game. Uh, thank you so much for those guys. <laughs> um <laughs> This, this Mr. Cross says I'll take shout outs whenever I can I guess uh, <laughs> go check them out to support our friends at SliceOnBroadway.com let them know the mayhem sent you and please don't do anything but open their door to the fresh smells of pizza kick it, your kick, no, it. No. kick it nope, nope. Uh, anyways thank you <laughs> go through the window if you have to yeah we'll be back after this no don't go through the window Just show them your shoe they usually don't open show them, show them your shoe. stand at the door show them their shoe and oh it's god like, that'll be 17 oh, dollars please it's okay that. here here's my shoe we'll be back after this message with the big question sidekick media services we are your sidekick in business for social media video production and more find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com any tips for <laughs> any tips for for yes for dealing with poppy drops. and poppy related things? And poppy this, has changed just, you. There's a it? lot of poppy related topics that need <laughs> processed first because all right, that's their homework. Yeah, that's that's just a whole different amalgamation. We'll, we'll, we'll say there, that. We'll say there that for. A, we'll say that for. Video. There's, there's we'll a say, Sorry, sorry. It's, oh, it's a delay. We'll save the uh, Poppy questions for Farnsworth. I don't week. think there's anything there angering me that I should talk about. There's a video where she just anyway. says, I am Poppy. Yes. It, oh, it's like a minute and she just says, I'm Poppy. No, no. It's 10 minutes. Oh, it's 10 minutes. You know what You know what a, her music's like? It's like that movie Glass that's coming out soon. It's like, <laughs> damn, it. <laughs> damn it. You know, multiple personalities oh, stuck in no. one person. We we know no. we know we know no, we're not getting a, we're not getting any of that glass money from WWE. No, we know too fuck much that. from that movie. I mean, I might be. Although it'd be Star- amazing. Starring yeah. David Otunga. <laughs> I do want to edit a video Wait, is it, now. Is it yes. Yeah, he's making a movie. Did you hear? Did you hear? <laughs> Wait, is he in glass? <laughs> no, I oh, don't okay. think he is. <laughs> no. <laughs> did you hear? I, I think David I did Otunga's see that. Making a movie. <laughs> David Otunga is on vacation. What did they say the one time when he just disappeared for a while? Yep. No way. He blood. came back. That, that was when he allegedly beat his wife or something. Oh yeah. What? Uh, he just dis- he disappeared yeah, no, there, from TV. Yeah, there for was a like while. a oh, thing. He was getting divorced. Was oh ugly. yeah, that's right. So that's this right. is the wrestling mayhem show, and we're trying so I'm hard. Poppy. Wait, we're starting. Podner said she's American I'm baby Poppy. metal. She is American baby yeah. metal, and that is amazing. So um, it's like if someone dropped like the like a Care Bear in the middle of. The gathering of the Juggalos to be raised as one of their own. Mad Mike, do you realize that I met a Care Bear at the gathering of the Juggalos this year? Was it named Poppy? No, she was not. Uh, but she was probably very high or drunk. You could have convinced her her name was Poppy. Yeah, yeah well, I probably could have. <laughs> Maybe Poppy <laughs> Seed. This is not. Oh, yes. Not, uh, there was probably Poppy. There is, there is some Poppy going around, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Poppy, I'm um, Pocky. A poppy on Pocky. There we go. Missy wants to know what the big question the is. The big question that I have for you guys. This world expansion of the WWE that's supposedly happening. Supposedly. We'll see. We heard, we heard uh, uh, you know, speculations about uh, Germany, um, NXT probably coming to. Um, what region would you like to see that expansion go to next? Antarctica. Antarctica. <laughs> Penguin Wrestling. <laughs> is that your final answer no 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 i'm just stalling for time okay i'm surprised we or maybe it's because of new, new japan but i surprised we haven't had a lot of inroads to japan i guess they've done a live special there but like i feel like i don't know if i said this on the show but i feel like like a something from the tokyo dome is like inevitable like we've done in australia like we've done in parts unknown um 
you know. I think that's a lot harder to get scheduled because of their New heavy Japan. ties with New Japan. You think so? You think yeah. it's like an MSG thing where they're trying to block them? That's what I would assume, yeah. Because they've worked, they've done shows at the Tokyo Dome. Like I, yeah, but, but they've done shows with all of their wrestlers. Mm. And not trying to do one with like an NXT Japan or something like so, that. So, and, and this is, you're talking about more recent years. Cause I mean, I have a, you know, one of those WWF world tour tapes. Oh with, yeah. Like, but that was back in the day when the relations were better. Yeah. The match was like Hulk Hogan and Ted DiBiase to give you a, a read yeah. on that. Right. So like, I, I don't know. It just, it feels like that could be, and we know they're talking to the China. So, but, um, is it weird? I want to see an NXT Canada. I was just thinking that. In Montreal, it's been like really neglected by WWE. No, no, I don't. I don't want it in Montreal because that's kind of too close to the East Coast. I want it set in Vancouver. Okay, and that could also serve as their West Coast operation too, right? Mm-hmm. You know who the headliner yeah. would be? Who, who would that be? Brock Lesnar. What? Yeah, why? He's oh, from Sas- Saskatchewan. He went Canadian on us. He did he did? Huh, Riz, what do you want? I'm surprised we haven't been to Mexico yet. There's not, there's not a, there's not a like, there's not a, there's not like more of a presence there. Yeah. Like I, and it just the wrestling there would be fun. It'll mm-hmm. be interesting. The crowds will be insane. Like, you know, the UK crowds are. Mm-hmm. It'll be like just that. Those people that uh, haven't seen lucha style wrestling, who have been only accustomed to the WWE style, will get to see something completely different. That'd be fun. All right, yeah. So we're covering all of North America with this answer. So sure. <laughs> what about you, Joe? Where would you like to see the venture? Well, I'd like to see the start of NXT Nigeria. <laughs> So we're going to finally get the end of the uh, big run for the great Power Uti. <laughs> Is that the one that was on Vice News a little bit ago? And beyond that, I'd like to see NXT Puerto Rico so we could have an actual possibility of a fan riot and uh, a nice cultured place where it's still okay to throw batteries and cups full of urine at the wrestlers. This is wow, big... that was not as dark as I thought it was going to go. <laughs> <laughs> We're in safe harbor. Everything's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, we should do an NXT Samoa. Don't, Just, don't headbutt Oh, there. actually, no. Don't, don't no headbutts. Head Sorg, I have another one. Hmm. NXT parts unknown. Mm, but no. completely make it a Lucha Underground show. <laughs> okay. Really? No, no, like like filmed in the style, like all the backstage vignettes filmed in the style of Lucha Underground, mm-hmm. where it can take it can literally be anywhere in the world. They have like like different buildings and stuff that they can work with and everything. Like I I think that would be fun. So and you're just gonna like turn everyone it is built from parts unknown except one guy who is from Springfield, Illinois, that just randomly finds himself there. Homer? Okay. <laughs> is it just Homer Simpson? Bobby is calling for Australia. Uh, uh, Podner says Brazil. I don't know. How my, I guess there is a Brazilian. Um, that uh, uh, Conti girl that's in NXT that was in the uh, May Young Classic was from Brazil. Um, the headliner would be Blanca from Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Against Amanda uh, Nunez. From There's UFC, a market from, for U, it. from UFC. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll that see. Was... What's that? What? Oh, that's that's next door. Okay. Actually, they're doing work next door. I don't know if that comes through on the podcast. I don't think a whole lot. But, yeah, there's some stuff happening. So we better get through the show before they get loud again. Um, anyways, uh, let us know your... Uh, what, what, where, where would Brandon you like says to... NXT London. Well, I... Like London, Ohio? Or... You... London, Does London, Canada, UK, England, because hmm? uh, well, I mean, we have the WWE UK NXT, so please, uh, no more promotions in Ohio. No, <laughs> no, sure. you don't want a UX, that's, a, that's an no. issue. N- NXT Cleveland, 
<laughs> it was Ohio versus everyone, and everyone won. That is true. <laughs> You're like tripping over promotions in Cleveland now, aren't yeah, you? Everyone didn't win. Everyone just migrated and joined Ohio. If you can't beat them, join them. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you can't swing a dead cat without running into a new wrestling promotion in Cleveland, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah or one's expanding. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, great for the business if there's a market for it, but there oftentimes is a lot more uh, a lot more supply than there is demand. And that's not just true with Cleveland, of course. That's true with a lot of places now and getting worse. There's but. a, yeah, Pittsburgh. Holy crap. <laughs> you would know. I, yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah, I would. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's why I like going to places like Wheeling, West Virginia, or Erie, PA, where there's just like maybe two of them. So... Because Pittsburgh and Cleveland wasn't enough for you? No, no, God. it isn't. It's, it's, hey, man, our, our world takeover. Has I'm worried about somewhere. you more so than the business at this point because <laughs> that ain't healthy. Well, we'll see how it goes here in 2019. Anyway, speaking of <laughs> craziness in wrestling, our good friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling have some stuff going on. Uh, they're still supporting uh, uh, our uh, their buddy uh, Marco Stunt, who had Joey Janela's a- L.A. Confidential. If I can get the words out here, saw some insane action, uh, but not without casualties. With uh, Marco Stunt was injured in a match and has had surgery to repair the broken leg. He looks to make a full recovery, but seeing as we bo- they both share a love for Nickelodeon crossovers, Occupy Pro Wrestling is looking to help 100% uh, 100% of all proceeds from their merch at What a Maneuver and Shop.OccupyWrestling.com will go to their buddy marco from now through the end of january they got a lot of great stuff over there including the legends of the lucha T- temple that was featured on in the crowd there on lucha underground season three uh just a little bit ago uh so go check it out what a maneuver.net look for the occupy pro wrestling store or hit up shop.occupyprowrestling.com and help out marco stunt there so good on them for uh supporting some indie wrestling in some creative ways so, okay, scratching out Poppy. Uh, <laughs> I got to make a mention because this is one of my favorite videos of the week. Uh, they put a video up on and one. Hey, did you know that uh, the Performance Center has a YouTube channel? Yeah. That's what I learned this week. Is it like a live feed that they have at the zoo I, where you can just like log I in? I wish that would be what amazing. That would be great. Just, just drills all day, right? Right. Just hitting the ropes. Hitting the ropes. But no, there was a great video that they put up of uh, Ray Rowe and um, Sarah Logan's, trying to get the right name, uh, <laughs> wedding, a Viking wedding. And I know some friends of the show, uh, J Rock and um, and uh, John McChesney, were there. A lot of, hey, hell, a lot of old premier wrestling, uh, I'm sorry, uh, prime wrestling faces were in this video in the background here a little bit, Joe. Yeah, M Dog, Josh Prohibition. Mm hmm. There you go. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, it, was, it was a really cool thing. That it was had. a very cute video. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> if, if you, you're no stranger to this, um, if you follow either their Instagram accounts, that's happening. I, I call it kind of, this is like kind of the season doing finale. And organizing of for over a year. And, uh, it's so. finally <laughs> happening. Our relationship started as strictly just a friendship for a long time. I was attracted to... Uh, inspiration and motivation. Uh, She's the desire to that, be a better person, to be a, a better uh, friend. What's that? Poppy. Do you want to talk about Poppy, sir? No. No. I, <laughs> there was this weird video this week. We talked about it enough off air, I think, uh, going into this. But uh, All right. If you don't know what Poppy is, just look up Poppy on YouTube, and she's doing a song for WWE. That's it. That's it. I hope it's not. <laughs> is it the Covered in Blood one I was just watching? Yep. Uh, once you stop, wa- once you start watching Poppy, you will not stop. No, no, no. That's a promise. Well, once you poppy, you can't stop it. There was yep. a question. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Liz, your thing went weird again. I don't, why can't why, we white balance is Riz? It, is it because of this shirt? Is it it must, your shirt's throwing it off or bright. something. You're looking all orange over there. Yeah, no. Uh, that's, that's disgusting. So we fix it. Fix Jeez. it. Fix it. <laughs> This is uh, my first time here in the Mayhem Studios. And we can't get my camera to work. Get my camera to work. Right, we'll hold just the, go to Joe's camera. Hold this over your face for a minute. Yeah, what, that's how it works. I don't know. What this I don't is. know. Maybe it may. Just, just, oh, there you go, Joe. I can't reach. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what's going on in Cleveland these days? Hey, Cleveland's a place. <laughs> um, there we go. There we go. No, 
I think you just wanted me to do this just so you can't just see ignore my face. it. You do that in silence. You'll be okay. Joe, what's going on in Cleveland? <laughs> well, Cleveland, of course, the home of Premier Championship Wrestling as well as Welterweight Wrestling. Uh, we just got done with the first ever turf war uh, at the beginning of the month, a 10 man elimination tag team match featuring the members of Chris LaRusso's court. LaRusso, uh, the main event, Gannon Jones Jr., Duke Davis. Uh, their newest recruit, uh, Tony Johnson, and of course the premier champion, Ron Mathis, taking on the culmination, Gory Atticus Koger, Remy LeVay, and their uh, very strange bedfellows, their unlikely allies, their former arch rivals, Cornelius Kremels and Sonny Defarge. Uh, Atticus and Gory both pinning Mathis to win that matchup, and as a result, it looked like we were going to have the unthinkable. Uh, Gory versus Atticus was on tap. To crown a new number one contender, Atticus suffering, uh, I believe, a a broken orbital socket this past Ooh, weekend. Jeez, oh, yeah, I was I was seeing the post on that one. Yeah, in addition to the concussion and the ankle and the broken finger that he's already recovering from, so Atticus is uh, questionable at best and very very much in doubt. So mm. um, there'll have to be some decisions made in regards to to how that situation is handled, but. Uh, be that as it may, uh, uh, Gory, the New Age Plague, is certainly uh, uh, still very much in the hunt for Ron Mathis' championship, and uh, Remy LeVay up there as well, and Atticus, if I know him, he's somewhere stewing somewhere, wishing death upon probably multiple people, and no telling what he's thinking or what he'll do regardless of his physical status. And uh, the other big thing that, that we're recently coming off of in Cleveland is the in-ring debut of Nick Lendl. Yeah, we had him on uh, uh, shortly before that event. I saw that him yes. in his stupid backwards hat. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love like Nick's at show, and then Nick's everywhere else presentation is is so contrasting. Yes, right. Con- I was going to go with contrarian. Let's be lucky. I had to keep reminding him in the early months to take off his earrings before he went out to perform. But be mm. that as it may. Um, no, I, I will say that, uh, uh, Lendl overachieved above and beyond any expectation. Um, did he win? Well, no. Uh, <laughs> that's what matters. The only wins and losses <laughs> matter to Larry <laughs> in pro wrestling. Well, wins, hey, wins and losses do matter, but unfortunately when you're J-Rock and you've got a chair and you've manipulated the official, you make people give it up one time, no matter how good of a job they do. <laughs> but uh, that matchup was a part of Premier's Holiday Havoc 2018, which will be available uh, later this week, courtesy yeah, of surely. all the Sorgatron Media, Sidekick, Indie Network, U.S. people thing, places that you've got going on for it you right now. IndieWrestling.us would be the VOD release for that. Sure. I think he plugged all of them, though. He all, did. Yes. Yes. And if you're confused, just find me and get a DVD. Um, That's true, too. <laughs> but Lendo and Andrew Palace versus J-Rock and Dave Kitsch, it was the... Um, Maybe first ever in this area, wrestler and ring announcer. Could we call it a mixed tag? Ish. <laughs> Is it? A, can we call it like a mixed profession tag? A mixed vocation. Yeah, mixed vocation. I can dig that. Yeah, but uh, uh, I was very concerned about that match because um, Nick Lendl is possibly the most popular wrestler in the world right now. What? Uh, at least in Turner's Hall in Cleveland. Okay. <laughs> uh, here's how popular Nick Lendl is, okay? And I'm not making this up. You're going to think I'm making this up? I, I'm not making it up. Uh, we just did the premiere 2018 Year End Awards. I've not released the results yet, but I will say okay. that Nick Lendl received um, uh, nearly double digits in write-in votes for Male Wrestler of the Year. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. This is a promotion this year that has had Brian Cage. Yes. Um, Abyss. Abyss. Jimmy Jacobs. Jimmy Jacobs, yeah. Ron Mathis, the champion. Gory. Mm-hmm. Ricky Shane Page. Gregory Iron. Trey Miguel. Brian Pillman Jr. Brian Pillman Jr., yes. Uh, but Nick Lendl got, you know, eight or ten write in votes for Female Wrestler of the Year. And Nick Lendl also received one write in vote for Female Wrestler of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> so he's popular. And. <laughs> I had With no everybody apparently. Yes, <laughs> yeah. there's a market. 
I had no choice but to put that match on last, even if I thought it would absolutely suck, because the people have just gravitated to watching Lendl stand up for himself against Kitchen and J-Rock. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, th- and that was a that was a loaded show. We had Ricky Shane Page and Jack Pollock, no disqualification. We had an eight man tag with the culmination uh, uh, against Larusso and company, and uh, the ring announcers went on last, and they hit a home run. Jeez. They Wait, hit a home who, run. Who announced the show? A uh, <laughs> guy named Cody White. Oh, <laughs> yeah, give somebody a chance. He was Earlier. he was without a doubt one of the four best ring announcers in that building that day. <laughs> <laughs> Did everybody do that math? Is everybody wow. with us? How many ring Is everybody still with us? Because mm-hmm. if because if Cody wasn't there, I just would have done it from. Yeah, yeah. You've done that. You've done double duty before. Uh, I've, I've watched at it. least. Um, my friend Mike Z from Michigan, who uh, has been filming a lot of shows for us, uh, is also an experienced ring announcer. He'll be ring announcing on February second. At, at, at in Cleveland for Zero Hour, which is our next event, because I have had to ban Lendl and Kitch from the building. Hmm. Because of their involvement in the J Rock Palace one on one match, uh, turned into a complete circus. We got to do this match again because there's big stakes. If Andrew Palace wins, Lendl will get Kitch one on one to avenge that tag team loss. And that's going to have to be main event again. <laughs> Maybe. Um, Cage match. If Dave Kitch, if, if J Rock is victorious over Andrew Palace. However, it's going to be J Rock and Dave Kitch in a two on one handicap match against Nick Lendl at a later date. So, uh, big stakes for Lendl. We could see the defining moment that he has hoped for since childhood, or we could see the end of Nick Lendl. Let us now enjoy a moment of silence for the career of Nick Lendl. <laughs> the which, Office 365 flag is at half mass which, already. Which rose so uh, 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 so meteorically and so rapidly, but will come crashing down to uh, just a bloody, bloody mess because he would not, apparently, from what I understand, give it up at least one time for J-Rock Daddy, which is required. One time, I gave it up two times for him. I was in the hospital for a week. It's dangerous. That's how they roll in Cleveland. Well, they roll a lot of ways in Cleveland. And J-Rock, I'll, I'll say this about J-Rock, too. Being knocked halfway unconscious in his match uh, will still not stop him from cutting a four-minute promo after. <laughs> <laughs> And anyone who goes on to the premiere uh, social media will find that out because we posted that tonight. Um, but we got J-Rock's post-match thoughts on his victory being pulled back and the rematch being announced. And, mm. of, of course, he he did what he does best, and that's blame somebody else for all of his problems, that being Dave Kitch. Comments in the chat room. Ty Cross says that uh, Nick will fly too close to the sun. Mm. Flight of Icarus. Okay. Icarus has worked for Premier Championship Wrestling. But didn't <laughs> did not get the amount of wrestler of the year votes that Nick Lendl has. No, is that in the past year? Not in the past year. No, it is Chikara's Icarus we're talking about. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So just to, just to clarify, not everybody's on on the Chikara bit. I'm I'm impressed that so. Ty Cross has his entire name now. He's 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 learned from it's earlier. Not T Cross anymore. No, <laughs> he's he's evolved. <laughs> you could say, but that's a different promotion that I don't think he's been in. He's. Progress? No, it's a different promotion. He's is he a prospect? No, that's somebody he, else. He done he got done more fired. letters. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, did he rise? <laughs> wait, wait, which rise? That is a personal question. Yeah. It is a personal question. Which rise are you? <laughs> Anyways, anything else going on in the world, of Joe Dabrowski? Oh, there's a lot going on in the world of me. You're announcing. You're you're probably announcing as many promotions as I'm filming these days. Oh my God! Yeah, just not at once like you are. Uh, I just got done uh, doing a voiceover for Prestige Wrestling based in Oregon. Ooh, um, I love all these p-word promotions. Okay, uh, but they're they're doing they're doing some good stuff out there, and and uh, I, I encourage anybody to look up to uh, Prestige Wrestling. They've got. Uh, uh, Filthy Tom Lawler in the next event. They've had DJ Z out there a little bit. They've had Good. MV Young out there a little Brian. bit. Cool. Um, thank you for wherever that air horn came from. Um, it's, it's Mike's thing. And I, I, I was a doing tick. a subdued one because you were really getting into it. So, and of course, this weekend is IWC uh, Reloaded 5.0 with the 
uh, infamous reset button. All the champions will have to defend against a uh, randomly selected opponent. We have a 16-bit challenge, a 16-man rumble with 16 randomly drawn opponents. Uh, uh, I've heard some rumor and innuendo over some talents who are looking to attend in the hopes that the reset button picks them and some names that I never thought I would see. Everybody's back there. Though. In an IWC. That's right. right. Everybody's yeah. back there. Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't know who's back. There. Everybody. That's, that's, that's what I'm that's saying. The, that's the people are going to be there throwing their name into the hat that I wouldn't expect to be there. And you might know who they are if they're picked. And if not, then nuts to you. Oh. So that's happening on Saturday. Yeah. Yes. And then the next week on Friday the 25th, which will be my 16 year anniversary in pro wrestling, uh, I will be in Philadelphia, ECW Arena for the. Bruiser Brody Memorial Cup, Ooh. which will feature uh, in action the likes of Abyss and Shane Douglas, a number of others. Abdul the Butcher will be there doing a signing, Stan Hansen. So uh, it'll be a very cool tribute to uh, uh, somebody who paved the way for so many talents like Bruiser Brody. Um, the next day will be Mega Championship Wrestling in Elyria, Ohio. And uh, then the week after that takes us right to Premier Championship Wrestling Zero Hour, Turner Hall in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, beyond that, a lot of fun projects with uh, some old content and some rarely seen content and some never before seen content rolling out in 2019. I've been hard at work on digitizing footage and going through film libraries. And uh, Sorg is going to hate me when mm -hmm. I send him the appropriate drive folder invites. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is true. This is true. Um, amazing. Always busy. Always great to see what's going on with you. I, I, I a lot of times I, I, I just see where Joe's going to see like what promotions I should be paying attention to. Oh, I should also mention that Future of Honor season one is officially launching. Um, not just uh the weekly one match slots on Fridays. Uh, full episodes of Future of Honor coming online, being taped, really being taped at the brand new uh. Uh, Ring of Honor Dojo in Baltimore. Okay. Uh, Danny Cage is the director of operations for that. I haven't personally seen the footage yet, but they're they're doing another taping uh, coming up, I believe, this Friday. And uh, that's going to start rolling out online very soon. I'm not sure if that's going to be, I'm assuming YouTube, maybe Honor Club, something of that nature. But uh, uh, a lot of great talents there. Uh, we just saw Brian Johnson at IWC. Mm-hmm. A couple months ago, we've seen Ryo before at a number of promotions mm -hmm. in the area. Um, Dak Draper was just at Fight Society. He's a big part of uh, of uh, a future of honor. So and he had a big showing. There's a, a big gauntlet match that, that happened this last uh, weekend. That's uh, now on VOD on IndieWrestling.us. Um, See how I set you up for that? Nice. That was perfect. We don't even have to do the next ad because we're practically doing it there now. You go. And, and um, Draper's such a great natural athlete too, mm -hmm. six five. He, he's he's one of those guys you look at him and and you're just in awe. He's, he's a can't miss prospect. No, absolutely. Yeah, it definitely sticks out there in fight society. He went in the gauntlet. He went uh, through. He got to the third guy before he got taken out. He was one of the uh, first seeds out. So, um, but uh, no, well, really that doesn't good. sound as impressive anymore. Clearly, he got blindsided. He was a victim of a double cross. His shoe was untied. The sun was on his eyes. It was something like that. Yes, slipped on the ice. Slipped on the ice. Yes, but um, but no, I, I think he went through m the most people in the gauntlet. Actually, so gauntlet matches a word. <laughs> so that is an oddly worded accolade. Went through the most people. I was mm -hmm. trying to figure out the most. Yeah. Okay. Most Anyways. most consecutive falls yes. scored. Thank you, thank you. People pay me to talk sometimes. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go. To, I'll go to the professional on this one. You're the one that's on Ring of Honor. Uh, so, <laughs> um, excellent. And uh, you can check out everything at you uh, dot com. Yeah, Joe Dash Dombrowski dot com. Uh, you can't use shorthand like that when you're plugging. Thank you. Um, you also have to probably refollow him on social media. Because you had a bit of an incident. I had an incident. I, my Twitter's fine, at Joe underscore Dombrowski. My Facebook, uh, if you're listening to this, you might want to double check and see if we're still Facebook friends or if we are still Instagram friends. Because uh, I woke up one afternoon, uh, poof, social media, bye-bye. Jeez. I don't know what specifically the issue was because I slept through it. 
Um, something probably got flagged, something in an inbox or something that was... There's no like theory I have that truly completely adds up. Um, before I went to bed, someone tried to send me a message um, and it wouldn't go through, it wouldn't send. They, it said they were like blocked from sending me messages, but then a minute later it was fine. And I just deduced that maybe it was because the link they were trying to send me was a little screwy. Mm -hmm. Maybe that got flagged and caused something weird. Maybe something else. Uh, I was emailing promoters. Could somebody have, have flagged me for spam? I don't know. All this seems like little and incidental and wouldn't lead to just me being eviscerated from the face of the earth as I was. Um, I will say this. So it's just your account was gone the next day. It was gone. I went to sleep at, at eight in the morning because I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. And I woke up at one and I woke up at one, two very confused messages of people who have no idea where I was. Mm -hmm. Um, so something happened in my, <clears throat> something happened in my sleep and I really didn't get a concrete explanation from facebook or, or anybody so something got violated that that uh, uh i was unaware was being violated or someone violated on my behalf but i will say this um since i got the new facebook my algorithm has been much better mm -hmm. um i'm getting a lot more likes on posts um really yes because you're a new person I guess maybe because just the lack of lack of dormant activity, lack of people kind of, I don't know, ignoring me. I'm easy to ignore. I don't know. I don't want to get into my psychological issues. But um, but yeah, like I posted a picture of some idiot that messaged me trying to get a Ring of Honor job and it's got like 160 likes so far. Um how long did it take to get the first one again? It's no uh, six hours after the profile. Six hours, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's no different than all the other idiots I profile. So it, it's 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 one of those things where I think just being new and active and like connecting with all of these people at once. I it happened five days ago. I'm already back up to fifteen hundred friends. Jeez, I've been trying to find everybody as much as I can. And when I had the old profile, I was so close to five thousand consistently. I couldn't go out and like meet new people or like connect with people like a lot of ring of honor people i'd never found and i mm. went and found now um so in a way it's a blessing in disguise to some extent i still you know i it was i was pretty angry that day but i mean in the long run you know facebook and instagram don't define me and is what it is but uh Cross, speaking of videos trying to get Ring of Honor jobs, he'll message you later. <laughs> <laughs> he'll get the same answer that I give to everybody, only his will have a few extra expletives in it and mm -hmm. probably an LOL. Do you think I could get a Ring of Honor job? Um, doing what? Stuff. Larry things. Larry things. <laughs> do they need, do they what? Need... Blocking their website like you did mine? Wow. Oh, Jerk. Oh. I, I, have, I, have, I, haven't, I haven't gotten paid yet. What? You're qualified for most wrestling jobs, then. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, you get paid for this? You're you blocking his website? Sure. Oh, you you can be grunt work guy number six. There you go. That's your territory. What's it? What'd you say? <laughs> I'll have to injure a few per people. Just <laughs> work your way up the ladder, right? Yeah. There exactly. you go. It's a pecking order. Yep. Exactly. Joe Dombrowski, and I'll just give the, the short ad since we kind of did it. IndieWrestling.us to see Premier Championship Wrestling. A lot of our projects. Just see Nick Lundell do a frog splash. Just see, that Yes, out. that'll be up this week. Absolutely. Successfully. Yeah, I mean, his. I'm sure his okay. knees were screaming the next day, but <laughs> <laughs> looked good at the time. <laughs> That's what counts. That's what counts. And You, you uh, can watch J-Rock make unsavory comments about Lundell's wife. Mm. A lot of things happen Ooh. in that match. Um, and she I'll, did not give it up one time. Good. That's good to know. Um, also, um, just on VOD, we just reposted uh, AJ Styles missing matches, too. There you go. Uh, always a hot seller for me. Um, and I guess... I hear he's been doing things. Yeah, vaguely familiar. Yeah. and He's been building houses. He's got a new hot dog business. 
We might as <laughs> we, we might as well drop the teaser, Sorg, that uh, coming. Let's say before WrestleMania, mm-hmm. we'll be doing Samoa Joe, the missing matches, too. We've got 16 matches, very rarely seen. I don't think we spent uh, an evening in a hotel room with him like we did AJ Styles. We so. did. Let's, no. Well, first, let's clarify yes. that AJ's a, AJ's a fine Christian man. Yes. And there was nothing unscrupulous in the hotel room other than AJ's uh, suitcase full of video games. That was awesome. He did not give it up one time. Well, he didn't have to <laughs> yeah. because he was not in Cleveland, nor was he with ah. J Rock Daddy. No, I don't think J Rock was even on the show that night. Um, so uh, uh, we did not have the Smojo interview, but I was able to dig through the archives and find some clips of a Smojo fan Q and A that we are going to put in there in between the matches. Nice. Um, some of them serious, see, some of them funny. See, I haven't seen the script yet, so no, you haven't, and you know. Probably don't even know that Disc One's in Google Drive right now. Oh, I'm aware of it. And I've been ignoring it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> because he wants you fans to get the first glimpse before That's he does. Right. Um, but no, we have 16 matches, including Samoa Joe's final ever indie wrestling match that Ooh. has never been released. Wow. It was never on DVD, BOD, anything. It was right, uh, right down the highway at uh, Washington Wild Things Ballpark. What? For uh, a show promoted by Matthew Justice, um, I just I just ran into Matthew Justice on Friday. That sounds painful. Yeah, well, um, yeah, no. Matt's a good guy. Also part of the uh, PW history on we, the network. We as had well. a good discussion about the wrestler because, um, oh, Anderson from the from the movie was on the show. Uh, something Anderson, I think. I know that that, that that narrows it down in pro so, wrestling, doesn't it? So you've done your research. Yes. No, no, I purchased the wrestler on on Prime Video the other day, and I haven't watched it again yet. Andrew been... Andrew Anderson. Thank you, Andrew Anderson, who I believe was... is vaguely related to Greg Valentine somehow. Really? Because they're always together at conventions. He's a lot nicer than Greg Valentine in my experience. Greg Valentine is just very sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> Greg um, Valentine was pretty sleepy in the eighties, though. Keep in mind, well, keep in mind what Gorilla Monsoon always used to say during Greg's matches, and it's true when you talk to him. Greg needs fifteen to twenty minutes to get warmed up. He'll be <laughs> fine after that. You just have to stick with him. Uh, Bobby FJ Town, if he was on the show here, he'd be telling you that. Uh, uh, he wants me to tell you that uh, Marty and Sarah bring up your ra- ravioli interview with Kevin Nash often on their show. It, it, remind me again the name of the show, please, Bobby. Well, I, I know, like we uh, watch wrestling, brings it up. Like when I used to listen to them, they brought it up all the time. The, the show is called Marty and Sarah Loves Wrestling. There you go. There you go. Still, you know, <laughs> what's important to keep in mind about that is. <laughs> and if anybody wants to know, just look up Kevin Nash Ravioli and on YouTube, and you'll probably find it. No, Ravioli's not in the tags. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's PWO Prime uh, Kevin Nash shoot interview. Um, <laughs> it was like an episode of of Prime, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, he the the story to that was. And I know you told it on the show, but it's which been is, years. it does come up. When By you the way, yes, yeah, I wanna... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's the first it, it, three it, it, entries. <laughs> yeah, Kevin Nash versus Ravioli. Yeah. You got some takedown notices before. to put out there. <laughs> okay, so we got some remixes we got to get rid of. There you there. go. Because <laughs> um, I ain't seeing that monetization if they remix it. That's the thing. Hey, people can laugh all they want because That's it is what it is, but. I've made more money off of that than any other clip I've ever Keep posted. watching it, guys. <laughs> it is, by the way, the, the, the second one with 200,000 views is the PWO Prime yeah, ac- one. Accidentally click the ads as much as possible. Like, <laughs> sneeze and hit your mouse. Are you the last person making res- making money off of YouTube pro wrestling? I'm making less money than I was before the, the crackdown. Yeah. But, like, I'll, I'll take the 37 cents, you know? Like... <laughs> I'll gladly run a YouTube uh, uh, account in exchange for like occasional free stamps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every penny counts, man. Um, Kevin Nash, his plane landed. He was driven right to Gargano's Catering, which is where that was filmed. Uh, where yes, I- and yes, that Gargano. Well, that Gargano's dad, yeah. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Johnny Gargano does not own a catering company. He's not, like, he, he has a full-time job currently, from what I hear. Uh, formation. <laughs> what do you think is the uh, lasting Bobby, legacy of that, that group in this life. industry? But, I mean, you know, I, I um, think it's. I, I don't so think the, the plan, they've tried to duplicate it so many times, you know. 
he was to me, it's... Revolution. It was our big event. And every time we did the big event, there was usually a reset. Mm-hmm. Uh, we take a month off. We do some recap shows. That was the end of our season. So we could we could pad it and fill a week with just Kevin Nash talking. And with commercials. Well, yeah, you got to edit it. Yeah. Um, but... So I, I, I had the, the format, and, and Kevin looked at it, and he approved, and he was cool with everything. Um, and we started doing it. And, and right before we started filming it, um, they took his, like, food order. And I figured, okay, they're going to prepare food while we're doing this. But, like, eight minutes into this interview that I have to get 47 minutes out of, they bring him a plate of ravioli. Eric Bischoff. And... It's not the ravioli you need. Eric Bischoff, Eric Bischoff is the only human being on the planet that can the look in the mirror and say, that's really what really I beat Vince McMahon at his game for two years. But now so have a arguably the biggest merchandise draw of all time. And um, he had his run after... I have to figure out... Amongst just and, myself. And this is all one camera shoot the entire time. One camera shoot. We can't cut away from this. With yeah, with with a completely novice cameraman. Um be, because our production guy at the time was a giant bag of dicks. Yes, yeah, so I wasn't working for you yet. Um no. <laughs> that needed to be clarified. <laughs> I want to yeah. make that clarified. <laughs> and you were you were only head of production like for one show as yes. the transition between bag of dicks guy and <laughs> and really cool guy that does it and makes a lot of great money now but um so i had to sit there and wonder to myself is he finished answering this question or is he just chewing <laughs> So you get a lot of weird, awkward pauses there <laughs> as I'm trying to figure out, should I move on? This went out on television. Or is he catching oh, up? We've put worse on television. Um, well, yes. You know, should I move on or does he just need to catch his breath? Um, <laughs> so I got a lot of feedback from that. I've, I've, I've gotten some ribbing from it. Like I've heard like radio hosts bring it up to Kevin on shows and try to get him to bury me, which he doesn't do. Um, because he made a lot of money that weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, strangest uh, 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 thing to me is when I was at uh, Global Force Wrestling when they're running the ballpark in Cleveland. Um, I was giving out free samples of homemade soaps. <laughs> wait, 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 what? <laughs> because I recruited a very oddball sponsor. Okay, <laughs> but she brought like twenty five care packages of homemade soaps uh-huh. and she wanted me to pass them out to the wrestlers. So I did because what else would I do as Jeff Jarrett's marketing guy but pass out the homemade soaps? Um, I got to the Bullet Club table and Gals and Anderson were like, wait, you look familiar. And like <laughs> I had, <laughs> I had done a show with with uh, with Carl Anderson in Canada, and Gallows did the IWC show. Gallows at IWC, and yeah. then once when he was you know way before WB when he was still a rookie. That'd be so a, that'd be a new era. Yeah. So maybe um, maybe that was my first thought, but then they brought up, no, you interviewed Kevin Nash, <laughs> and like they they watch it like. You know, on the plane or on their Japan tours or whatever they were doing at the time, and um, like I was like, I know, I'm sorry. And I was like, No, you did great, you did great, but we just think the whole thing was hilarious because he's just eating the ravioli the whole time. It was a... There's well, fans in the strangest places for this thing, man. I also but... want to point out he did not finish that. Sentence. No, <laughs> Kelly, Kelly, no, no. no. He doesn't like um, salad, I think Vince does a really good job of. of... Telling us like, about, about the interview, he stopped the interview at one point to point out that he doesn't like olives in the salad. <laughs> and there was a whole bunch of olives in there. Were, there were there were new like, all of the olives. Wait, 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 were in Riz, there. Riz, was, have, you, have you listened to this entire thing? Yes, you have. Was this a, was this originally a shoot interview, <clears throat> or did it just turn into one? Like halfway through, when he decided to point out that he doesn't like olives. No, the, the, the <laughs> olives wasn't the, the olives. only shoot part. 
Okay. Yeah, you, you need I to didn't listen know, to I, didn't, I don't know. Have I haven't you, seen have it. You, so. you, you need to it listen was, to it. It was a career retrospective covering okay. a lot. We did word association. We did a ton of stuff. Okay. Um, Kelly, Kelly was mentioned a Kelly lot Kelly was times. mentioned numerous times, yes. <laughs> I got very uncomfortable with Kelly Kelly around um, that time. but it, it, What? I will I, I will say, too, and, and this will be something else that we're going to have to, 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 to publicize. Um Mike Moran found, and Mike Moran is the the the, the good director that I yes, mentioned. Yes, the previously. one that I transitioned and have yes. done work with. Yes, um, he found in the archives footage from the uh, Resolution Four pre party from that weekend, where Nash did a fan Q and A uh, while drinking, probably wine, but something alcoholic. Mm-hmm. Um, and there were more references to Kelly Kelly. And oh, almost every fan question um, somehow just <laughs> somehow just sunk into him either telling them to learn Mandarin Chinese because it's the future or talking <laughs> or talking about uh, reverse mortgages. So <laughs> that is footage that we're going to need to get out there sometime soon. Uh-huh. Um, at one point, Nash just looks directly into Mike's camera and goes, "Where's this going anyway?" <laughs> so I don't. I I can guarantee he doesn't remember this existing or where it wound up, which it wound up on a hard drive and never going anywhere. But we've unearthed it. It's like thirty minutes, thirty five minutes of Nash, um, asking really awkward or answering really awkward, nervous fan questions and. Uh, I'll probably be putting out a Kevin Nash DVD this year just to repackage the other Nash footage that we're talking about and add that in. Just a quick little... Wait, wait, wait. Is it going to be the interview with the Olives, this new thing, and the match for Resolution? Yes. <laughs> That's it. Because I, I can't remember any other Kevin Nash things other than like IWC that that's, happened. That's a solid like two hours of content that is, we can throw up as a, <laughs> that's a DVD. As a, as a, as a one disc DVD, quick sell. People will buy it. People VOD. Will buy it. it up for like five bucks. People will buy it. It'll sell with like the, the legend shows, big time wrestling, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. And plus we're going to repost this part of this interview <laughs> when wait, it wait, comes wait. out. Wait, wait, wait. Is this on the DVD? Well, it could be. Are we on the DVD Ooh. right I, now? I want to run into Kevin at a... Um, I want royalties. I want to run into Kevin at one of these big time events and just do like a follow-up. And like I, I offer him a salad or something. <laughs> Br- bring him a <laughs> no, can of Chef Boyardee. I, I, think, right? <laughs> I think if I remember correctly, on the WCW table for three on the network, Nash does get does talk about the food that they give them a lot. Yeah. See? Like, <laughs> and where did he learn how to analyze food like that with me? Yes. I, I, I found it very, like, because normally on Table for Threes, they never talk about the food. They always like, talk about make, the food. No, no, they don't. At not not to the level of Kevin Nash did. Not as much as Kevin yeah, they don't Nash. Spend, they don't spend They'll make like, one an offhanded entire segment mention. about that. Yeah. So anyway, the Samoa Joe DVD. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot this is still a Starring Kevin Nash. I just wanted to point out that we have his last independent wrestling match ever yes. at the Washington Wild Things Ballpark, <laughs> promoted by Matt Justice, which is where we went awry. Um, is Samoa Joe versus... Oh, that- Bobby F. Town's the one that threw this off. Yeah, it's Bobby's fault. <laughs> yes. Well, who did he ever beat? It's Samoa Joe versus, versus M-Dog 20, Matt Cross. Match was never released, never wound up anywhere, but we're going to have it on this oh, DVD VOD release. It was Joe's last match. He was already doing... Uh, NXT like one offs at this point, mm-hmm. but he had just signed. He was on his way out, and like uh, maybe a week or two later was whatever the SummerSlam NXT takeover was, and he was he was off to the races. So, yeah, end end of an era on that disc. Plus matches with AJ, Daniel Bryan, Austin Aries, uh, Christopher Daniels, Chris Hero, uh, uh, Masato Tanaka, um. Rhino, some other people. It'll be out by WrestleMania because if not, I'm just gonna keep all of Sorg's cut. Oh shit! Mm. We on that? That's that's a shoot, brother. That'll be a WrestleCon debut, brother, brother, brother. Oh, wish I could go to WrestleCon again. Freaking you back can. In New York. 
We the can guy, strap you to the roof. I will be in a hotel in Van Nuys, California. That is not my fault. Nope. Nope. <laughs> it's a client. We can FaceTime you into WrestleCon. And, you and can I want to... You point can just watch me shill, um, you know, uh, uh, 30-year-old magazines for Sorry, three days. Just send so me a like, GoPro. Yes. I'll strap it to my chest, and I'll just walk around WrestleCon awesome. and say, and put a little sign above it that says Sword Cam. Can we get a full-size cardboard cutout? Of what, you. me? Of you. What? Oh, we, we probably could. Take, we, we definitely could. And just strap a mic to it and just put sorgisms. Just have, just have the, just have the, the, the standy just go, awesome, awesome. Like every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shoot. <laughs> I'm just gonna bunk my face now. So this is what happens when I'm I'm in the studio now. Yes, sort. you break the camera and I break the camera <laughs> and, and I, I, I want to like insult the host that like turns you different colors now. I like, let me, let me see. that's not gonna work. No, it's not. It's, it's not, it's not close enough. Is the problem? I think just <laughs> there. Now he just David Letterman yeah. that 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 white card. Good oh. good for you. Anyways. Anyways, uh, it's time Larry, for the show. Larry was uh, threatening me with water. Let's, no, let's, I was offering you water. Let's find out what everybody learned from pro wrestling this week. Hmm. Okay. So let's go first. Pass. I need, to think, I need no? to think of something. No? You need to think of something. Hmm. This is what we do. I know you haven't been on for a while. Rose. I know. But I learned that uh, Mick Foley is wrestling, Dad. John Cena was wrestling dad. No, no. I mean, he looks like wrestling dad. But no, I'm John like, Cena's wrestling uncle. Mick Foley is like the most disarming and comfortable person to be around. That's a legend. Hmm. I think in pro wrestling. I don't know. Maybe Kevin Nash after <clears throat> your experience, Joe. It uh, depends on how many uh, how many glasses of wine and how many olives are involved yes. in the situation. <laughs> There's an olive to mood ratio that we really don't have time to get into. But, so I was at a legend show Friday night up in up in Youngstown, and you know Mick's there, and I've seen Mick at several shows. But I, I was thinking back to I think the first time I ever met him was the first Meadville show for IWC, right? Okay. And we were filming some stuff in the background, and he just immediately the most comfortable and disarming guy. Like you know, I think most of us when we meet a legend or something, <laughs> you know, the first time I meet a Kurt Angle or Jericho or something, like you get the butterflies a little bit. From meeting somebody, what? Well, you give me a face over there. No, no, you don't. But um, Mick was never like I, I, Mick is just like the most comfortable person at a wrestling show. It seems, and it might be the sweatpants. I don't know, but it just that was kind of my realization from from Friday night and seeing him at a show again, um, and filming a segment that that he was involved in as well. So that's mine. That's what I learned this week. I learned I really want to see B Team versus Brock Lesnar. E team versus Brock Lesnar. <laughs> they were, they were in line. They were in line. They had they had their opportunity. Yeah, didn't <laughs> didn't work out. Didn't work out. That would have been a Royal Rumble match in front of. I how kinda, many is I, it? Is it forty thousand at that ball field? They're going to do. <clears throat> probably. I mean, it's roughly, like, yeah. That's like the, they'll probably be, by, by McMahon standards, eighty thousand. Eighty, sure. A new a new ballpark rec- record. I'm yeah. sure. Twice the seating capacity. And I learned we need to get new cameras, sort. No, the camera is fine. I mean, I mean, it's the content. All right, there might be tape on that camera, but it's fine. I, I, it's fine. I hear you, Larry. It's good enough for Premier Wrestling. <laughs> I hear you. I, I hear you. Larry, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Fuck, I don't know. Otis can <laughs> make a protein shake. <laughs> what? Otis can make a protein I shake. I know you can come up with something better than that. I'll work on Mad it. Mad Mike, what'd you learn? Uh, I learned that. Uh, Nikki Cross just wants to fight everybody. Okay. She basically challenged Rey Mysterio to a match on SmackDown, and I would like to see that. Yes! Please! Absolutely. Joe, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Well, I learned that uh, Braun Strowman will uh, not back down in the face of Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar or any of the intimidating killers of this industry but if um, 73-year-old Vince McMahon looks at him long enough, <laughs> he will cower and, and, and back up and completely emasculate himself and probably wet himself on the spot because mm-hmm. that's how you get over the defiant, rebellious baby face. Who can forget all the times Austin and Rock back down in fear of Vince McMahon? 
I, I also to to piggyback off of that, I also learned that on SmackDown, Vince McMahon wants people to punch him in the face. But if someone flips his limo on Raw, he takes away their championship match. He's had well, a bad history of car damage at his well, shows. <laughs> let's back up here. The limo flipping happened after. Okay, yeah. so it was even yeah. less so it was even less damage. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Basically. It, oh you oh guys, hold on. I just figured out why Braun lost his title match. Because WWE was promoting glass. There it is. And Braun there it is. He broke showed how weak yeah. glass is. Guys, we are through. Wait for it. The looking glass here. Good night, everybody. Ah. All right. Uh, Larry, Larry, did you find come up with anything better? Six hundred. I can't top that. Six hundred and forty nine no. episodes, huh? And it, it, yeah, six, it come down it came down to this. Yep, exactly. This was the last episode ever. It's a new oh, era. Uh, no, you know what? I did learn something. Oh, oh good. I, I learned my twenty eighteen prediction was three weeks late. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I learned. Yep. You're talking about the women's tag the title. Women's tag title, there yes. Go. There you go. Uh, technically it was announced. In it was announced on Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve? It was announced on Christmas that Eve. That it was so... happening? So, I mean, it depends on how you want to qualify it. We can, we can count it. I mean, maybe you can, I'll give you a half point. There were, there were signs that were given out. What? There were signs given out to the fans. Signs given out to the fans? That says we want WWE, tech, we want WWE women's tag I don't tag think those were given out. Those are plants. I don't know. No, I, because people heard... wanted those at Evolution for, no, that was for real. Alex Miller learned that uh, he wants to take some Walter chops. Mm. No, I don't think you do. Nobody, I would. don't no. think you want that at all. Man. Do you want your? Chest I, need to find, I need to find that Ray Road chop video just as a cautionary tale for people. <laughs> Ray um, Ray. I can't find, find it. that Amon clip. I can't find it. Somebody did tell me to bury that footage, and apparently Sword. I did. Find that Amon clip. The, the Amon clip. Uh, did we shoot? Yeah, yeah, but that's. I don't know. I think he was a minor at the time, so I think we can get in trouble for that. Oh. Um, <laughs> he, 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 chopping. Well, we were chopping him. Yeah, we were chopping. We were chopping. Jeez. That doesn't sound better. No, it doesn't. He had Bobby, his shirt Bobby on, of J-Town fine. learned that Kamala's go-to meal at Denny's is belly moons over my hammy, and we took a time machine back to the Attitude Era. So far, it's not been fun. Yeah. Yeah. I. They, what? That's true. Where did the Kamala thing come from? Um, Kamala. because Kamala went to Denny's, but Kim she had to order for him. Yeah, no, Kamala went to Eaton Park in the story. Oh, okay. Uh, well, maybe he went to well, Denny's too. I so Eaton Park, so Eaton it's a joke. Listen, you'll, find what, what <laughs> you'll find out later this week. We have a gimmick. You'll find out later this week when we post that on Indie Wrestling Network. Uh, that place is called Park and Eat. Can tell who's not in Pittsburgh. Mm. Anyways, uh, Carnegie. thank you so much, Joe Dabrowski. Joe Dabrowski, hyphen Dabrowski.com, actually. <laughs> and wherever you are, <laughs> you are having a good time over there. <laughs> and we still have to film something. <laughs> that was the worst plug I've <laughs> ever heard in my life. Joe Dash Dabrowski.com. Hyphen. Yeah, dash, or is there, what's the difference between dash and hyphen? N- nothing. The word. Some people get their hyphens broken. You have to dash. I think we have to dash now because we are <laughs> running long on this broadcast. Yeah. Yes, we are. Uh, Riz? 649 episodes. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, but yeah, Riz plays games on the Twitch. I am actually streaming this, hosting you guys right now. Oh, shit. Hosting us here talking about... What's up, Twitch? Hi. Uh, so yeah, go to Riz plays games on the Twitch at twitch.tv slash Riz Plays Games. Larry, what do you do in the basement? Well, apparently you can find me at joe-dabrowski.com. <laughs> uh, but when I'm not there, you can find me at darkforgestudios.co for any of your prop fabrication or what about hyphen? design. No hyphens. No hyphens? Nope, no hyphens. No hyphens. Nope. But no I got hyphens. one of the stash. <laughs> joe-wilder-dabrowski.com. <laughs> um... And Mad Mike four eight eight three on the tweets. Yeah, you can find me at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the twitters and also YouTube dot com slash Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, thank you, everybody. At Sorgatron, the Tory, SorgatronMedia.com. Keep an eye out for interviews. If you haven't checked it out, check out our Rosa Mendez interview from the Indie Mayhem show last week. And this week, I believe we are posting the absolute Thomas Mathis interview on Indie Wrestling. Dot us into the indie mayhem show on all your podcast feeds out there or if you check out all of the shows on the wms master feed also on podcast platforms as well until then we'll see you guys next time mayhem out This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.